I should call my channel Greasy Gal. I mean, look at that. I am so sorry that the maintenance at the moment is very, very low. Waxing has been a no-go. Shaving, I hate shaving, so I always wax. And because of the lack of waxing going on at the moment, it's it's not a pretty sight. So, but I'm just keeping it realsies. Uh, <laughs> you see so many like YouTube YouTubers who make such an effort, and the makeup's on point, the clothes are on point, and here's me just whapping on a bit of um, a bit of lip gloss uh, with greasy hair and wearing North Face. I mean. Soz. I think I've shown my breakfast now on two occasions and I've not shown you my lunch so I thought I'd show you my lunch today. Um, I'm getting really excited. <laughs> so lunch in the past, uh, before I started engaging in recovery, was very much boring. Um, it was very much veg focused. Um, so with regards to nutrients, I had it in my veg, but as a as a whole meal, it wasn't healthy at all. And so, so one of my main focuses now has been to incorporate all the different food groups um, and not leave anything out. So if I have a salad, I make sure that it comes with the carbs, it comes with the protein, it has the fats, um, and not just have a salad. Yeah, I'm really excited about lunch now. Before it was just... I really didn't enjoy it, along with breakfast and dinner, but now I love lunch. This isn't what I'm going to be having all together. I'm actually going to be having a bit of salad with this and some hummus, but I need to warm this up because it's been in the fridge. But yesterday, or the day before, I can't remember when, anyway, I made some roast potatoes um, with some paprika, olive oil and some salt. And then there's some aubergine there, which I've roasted with za'atar, salt, and olive oil. So this is what I've been using, the sitar. Um, so there's sesame seeds, sumac, thyme, marjoram. Every time I read marjoram I think it says marijuana. <laughs> but it's not marijuana, I promise. Um, oregano, salt, basil, sunflower oil. So that's what the sitar... Oh, I didn't realise there was sunflower oil. Okay, so I could freak out at that and think, oh, well... I've put sunflower oil and olive oil on that, but I'm not going to freak out. It's tasty. It's nice. Forget the numbers. Oh gosh, I shouldn't have seen that. Anyway, forget. And I made um, homemade falafel, which is on Deliciously Ella's third book, I think. Um, their sweet potato falafel and yeah, they smell nice. So we'll, we'll have a wait and we'll have a wait and see. I can't really speak today, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I just love hummus at the moment. Just the different types that you can get. You can get roasted red pepper. There are more. I just can't think. Roasted red pepper, sun-dried tomato, that's a good one. Lemon and coriander, not tried that one yet, but I have seen it, so I may try that one. I think you can get aubergine hummus, which I may try, but I'm not I'm not all too fussed about that. What other hummuses are there? Like I said, I can't think today. <laughs> also, if you want a bit of puff, like this. My hair is very thin and brittle at the moment, so how to get it a bit thicker and voluminous? Plait it, sleep on it, and then take the plaits out and brush it through. And then you've got basil brush. Or, do you remember the pom-poms on the side of the bikes? That, those sparkly pom-poms? That's, that's what I am. I'm one sparkly pom-pom. Join the gang. You're welcome.
finished product. Yummy, yummy. Yum. Bruno, by the way. <laughs> Bruno, come say hi. Come say hi. No, no. Oh, there we go. Thank you. That was kind. Like a little bear. Oh, here we go. Oh, he's got Santa. His favourite toy. <laughs> what you like? What you okay? There you go. And and rest. <laughs> The biggest thing that I'm struggling with at the moment is definitely body image and finding ways to de to deal with this weight gain. Um, but a lot of it is trusting the process, trusting my body, trusting that it sits at a set point that it's comfortable at. I just need to trust my body again. Um, even if I feel uncomfortable with doing so and the outcomes of trusting it as well. So a few things that, well, five tips, um, so to speak, that have really, really helped me in accepting this body. I mean, maybe not even accepting it, just sort of dealing with the, the weight gain that happens in recovery. Um, five things that have really, really helped me. Um, so I'll list them here. Um, so the first one, I'll talk through each one individually as well. So the first one would be comfy clothes. I've actually written it down because my memory is like a sieve. So the first one is comfy clothes. Um, diversify your Instagram feed, your Facebook feed, any feed really. Um, and also YouTube as well. Uh, trust your body. Um, body checking. So stop body checking and focus on what your body can do, not what it looks like. So if we go through the first one, comfy clothes, it's very easy to look at your eating disorder clothes and being tempted to try them on during the recovery process. Clinging on to that anorexic or that malnourished body, it's very toxic and it's something I get caught up in a lot. I have a wardrobe full of eating disorder clothes at the moment and the temptation to try them on to see if they still fit, to see how much I've gained, it can really throw you off course. Um, of course, you know, those, those clothes aren't gonna fit anymore. They were never meant to fit you in the first place, if I'm honest, and so, as hard as it is, it's ignoring those clothes, chucking them in a bag, giving them to your mum to keep in a bedroom, anything that will just stop you from trying them on, being tempted to try them on, because in all honesty, it's just gonna make you feel shit about yourself and you don't need that right now. You just need to be in comfy clothes. I am in shorts a lot of the time, really stretchy shorts. I do buy sizes um, clothes at the moment that are much bigger than what probably should be fitting my body because I just hate the feeling of, I just feel claustrophobic in tight clothes. Skinny jeans is a no-go. Like, don't tempt yourself to wear skinny jeans. Go for leggings. Um, but shorts are a winner, in my opinion. Baggy shorts, yeah, can't beat them. Although winter time, that's gonna be a bit tricky, but hopefully we'll establish a good wardrobe by then that will fit me properly throw the skinny jeans, the eating disorder clothes away, they're not gonna serve you. They have no purpose in your life, really. They're just clothes that were never meant to fit you in the first place. 
Okay, the second one is Diversify Your Feed. So this is on YouTube and Instagram and a couple of people I follow on YouTube that are helpful and are just fab really is um, Megzy's Recovery. Is it Megzy's? Megzy Recovery? Megzy Recovery. She's great. Um, she's British but she's living in Dubai and she's made a ton of videos on her recovery and what's helping her at the moment and also the challenges that she's been doing. So food challenges and breaking the eating disorder rules around food, what you should be having, timings, things like that that just rule your life. So Megzy, um, Stephanie Buttermore, she first set out as a fitness influencer um, but she realised how restrictive that life was and how toxic it was for her mental health and for her body as well. She felt tired, lethargic, she'd lost her period, she was so hungry all the time, moody, irritable and so she went through this process of all in where she eats intuitively, listens to her body, stops when she's full um, and she documents it really really well. Um, she doesn't hide from her discomforts, she lays it all on the table and I commend her for that so definitely follow her as well. There are a couple more on Instagram, I'll actually link them below, so I'll put them in the comments below um, on who, because there's so many, so yeah, they'll be in the comments. It's the third point, which is trust your body. Um, we are made up of complex DNA, genes, um, cells. Our biology is very, very unique, and our body wants to be at a certain place. Um, Kendall Jenner, for instance, has genes that make her very slim, slender, but that's who she is. It's very, it's all well and good for us to aspire to be like that, but our body may not want to be like that. Our body wants to be at a comfortable place and it's getting to a level where we're accepting of that place. It may be that our genes want us to carry more weight on our legs or on our shoulders, on our arms, on our body, um, on our body, on our belly, um, on our ankles, on our toes. Just be excited. Oh, he's yawning and he's coming down. There we are. And chilling again. It's being accepting of that, accepting of our genetics, um, our DNA, and it's impossible for us, although we try our very hardest to do it, it's impossible for us to get that perfect body. It will never be perfect enough. I got to a place where I wanted to lose more weight and I never thought that where I was at, which was undernourished, underweight, was good enough. And so my good enough would probably be in a coffin, just skeleton bones. Bones are skeletons, that made no sense. Trust your body. <laughs> Body checking is definitely another one. It's still something that I am struggling with a tiny bit, whether it being how my clothes are fitting, do they feel a little bit tighter, uh, checking my wrists, how my fingers are fitting on my wrists. Oh. Mirror is another one, how your body looks when you're lying down, um, how your legs are splayed across the sofa, all of this, how your shorts are maybe riding up a bit more one day, how are your legs chafing? It's part of life. Girls have to chafe. We're chafers. Anyway, it's really trying to catch yourself when you're doing that, which is difficult. It's so difficult. I'm, I do it so subconsciously now and it's become automatic. I do it and then I have to catch myself and I have to be like, no, I am more than this. Just because maybe some things fit a little tighter one day or I think I look a little bit bigger one the other day, it doesn't mean that it's real. It's what my mind is trying to convince me of. Um, and I can't trust my mind at the moment. My mind is untrustworthy. Big word of the day, boom. No, I'm not gonna say stop body checking because sometimes it's impossible. You're going to body check, but catch yourself when you do do it. Recognize that you're in that pattern of, shit, I am checking my wrists. And just tell yourself, this, I am more than this. I am worth more than 
how my fingers are wrapping around my wrists that day. I am so much more than how my body looks in the mirror that day. I am so much more than how my clothes are fitting that day. Your body will fluctuate throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month, fish, but that is okay. My brother body checks, you know, my mum body checks, my sister body checks. It's so ingrained in our society to see how we look and judge ourselves on that. And so when you do do it, realize that it's not helpful behavior. It will make you feel crap about yourself and focus on the things and the values that you do have. The last one is focus on what your body can do. Whether this be you're creative with your hands, you're so artistic, you can draw like Picasso and that, that isn't me, I'm not Picasso, but some people out there are pretty damn good with their hands and they can draw a good portrait. Um, or you're a baker, or you're into handwriting, or um, what else can you do with your hands? You're good with hair, plaiting people's hair, focusing on the little things that you can do and not what your body looks like. Um, I've gotten into yoga, which I'm absolutely in love with, you know, find those little things that your body can do and appreciate and really acknowledge that you are so much more than your body because you so, so are. I hope you found those tips helpful. And for all of you that are struggling with your body image, I, I totally, I totally understand. But that doesn't mean that you should run back to your eating disorder because you find comfort in that and because you may prefer your eating disorder body. Um, that body just, is not worth a life, really. It's not worth your time, it's not a life, and it's just depressing, sad, and lonely. Having issues with your body at this moment in time is a small price to pay for um, having a better life in the long run. So from me and a very tired boy, send them your love. So take care and have a great week. Um, keep progressing, keep fighting those inner thoughts, inner demons, um, onwards and upwards. And love you lots, bye.